Thanks for tuning in to episode six. This is the last episode of my video build log of the Black Horse Models Gilmore. It's actually a Waddell Williams Model 44. It's the Gilmore Red Line. We've all seen the plane before. It's one of my favorites. And if this is the first episode you're seeing, go back to my YouTube channel and you'll see a playlist of all six episodes where I go from unboxing, setting up the wings, the landing gear, the fuselage. And in this episode, we're gonna mount the ESC and then apply some decals, which have been provided by your favorite vendor and mine, Cali Graphics, who provided a great custom decal package for this airplane. So before we get back to work, we're gonna go one last time to the Crawford Auto and Aviation Museum in Cleveland, Ohio, to see some of the memorabilia they have around the golden age of air racing. And then we'll get back to the bench and we'll get to work. Now I've looked everywhere for as many pictures of the real Gilmore Red Line and this whole time I had never seen this picture before and this is blown up nice and big on the wall. It's clear and conveniently in this episode we'll be applying those three decals so it's a perfect time to show it off. And check this out, 1931 model airplane contest that happened at the National Air Races so it's really cool to see even in the early 30s that model airplanes, people were having fun with that. So this was really cool to see. Finally, last glory picture of the real NX61Y. Let's hope all this work we've done will do this plane some justice. So first I wanted to show you how I mounted the ESC. So here is the Hobbywing ESC, and I took a piece of light plywood and cut it to fit perfectly on top of the motor box and right up against the round motor mount. So I'm gonna lift up the tail here to show you. I affixed a, a small wooden piece mounting bracket on the back right there. And so the ESC board is going to sit up against the firewall on the motor box and then right up against the back of the round motor mount and then screw into that bracket. So we'll show this going in here. This was a lot of trial and error. I wanted to get this nice and tight and perfectly fit so there wasn't any play. So you can see here's the screw into that little bracket. And then the back two screws actually go through the ESC, through the mounting board and into the top of the motor box. and that's nice and secure. And placing the ESC here is nice because the batteries are almost right underneath it, so the your power cables don't have a long run to go, and they can sit right on top of your LiPos. You're going to have to cut out some holes in the wing root for the aileron servo cables, so as always, I use my flashlight to illuminate the place where I'm gonna cut and just go around the edge. And so now we're opening up these holes and I'm not gonna show it in this video, but just behind this hole I'm cutting out now and at the front, there are two small round holes that you're gonna have to cut out for the pins that are in the wing, uh, the anti-rotation pins. So same concept, just smaller holes.
Here's a little finishing touches. The screws that I mounted, the wheel pants and the, 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 the fairings, I just painted red and I wanted to show you the difference. This is unpainted and then boom, here is painted. It makes a big difference. It literally took a minute to paint these and they make a big difference. So I did the same thing with the canopy screws and the cowl mounting screws painted those black so I'll show you what those look like so here I had to go with a little plush line he's waving at you he's ready to fly the Gilmore red line of course I'm gonna name this guy Gilmore and my wife helped me out uh, I had to cut him up and she sewed him shut so he'd fit in there but um, it's gonna work out pretty cool he doesn't weigh very much and so instead of gluing the canopy I'm electing to use uh, screws because I actually bought a second canopy that I cut open depending on if I decide to fly with Gilmore in there or not I wanted to have an open cockpit so that's why I'm not gluing it. I have two cockpits, a closed one and an open one. And I know for a lot of photos, I wanted his ear sticking out. So we'll go from there and we'll make sure that this is secured nicely. And there's those black painted screws. They just kind of blend in with the rivets and the covering. And here's, now that we've found the perfect spot for the cowl, I painted the cowl mounting screws black and they fit really nice in with those pinstripes. Here's something that the control horn on the right elevator, because those horns are the same piece, if you mount it, it's impossible to tighten that screw. So to solve this, I just unhooked the rod from the servo, pushed it back just like you see in this photo, tightened the screw we know goes on the, in the top hole and then reattached it to the elevator simple and easy. I thought it was going to be a nightmare, but then I was sometimes simplest always wins. And it's always kind of weird after you mount a cowling, is it the hatch going to fit? But by this design, and if you see this, you'll notice it's not a problem at all. And let's put the hatch on and get to some decals. So as I said in the opening, I ordered a custom decal kit from Cali Graphics and they delivered very nicely. So always try to have some pictures, some reference pictures on hand. The, the, the decals from Black Horse did not include this little lion that goes underneath the cockpit. So I went ahead and had her do all of the lions. So they all matched. But here's a little trick. I don't know, maybe this is common knowledge, but when applying these decals, I cut off a piece of the backing. And here you see I'm positioning this. I'm going to position his foot near one of those rivets. But because I cut off that backing, I can stick the whole thing and it's not going to move. Now it's where it is. And now I can peel it back and then peel back the rest of the backing and then slowly apply the decal <clears throat> and you'll see my finger runs through the center of the decal first and then you work your way out just apply a little bit of pressure to make sure that decal sits and sometimes this is a little scary when you're peeling this back but Cali seems to use some really high quality materials and I didn't have any problems with this and you'll see but always be careful peeling this back and you'll see how I peel it back And there's always a little bit of worry. Is the red going to match? Um, I think there, the decal red is maybe just a tint off. Maybe an artistic person, a graphic designer would notice, but it's good enough for me. And in fact, maybe it's just a little bit lighter than what's on the covering, but I think it looks great and looks like it fits right in. So next, also not included in the Black Horse decals is this little Gilmore Oil Company Limited logo that goes right behind the cowl. And in fact, I worked with Cali a bit uh, and made some of these decals bigger. And really this should be a little bit bigger because it really should be about in the middle of the hatch, but we're gonna, we're gonna work with what we got. So from pictures, you see that this is usually right in front of the face of the line. So I just use some blue painter tape 
and make it a line between two of the rivets so I can just have a guide to apply this decal as straight as possible. And I wasn't able to do that trick with some of the backing because this one was cut pretty small, so I had to kind of do it manually. There was enough overlap where I can see the blue painter's tape through the top film and was able to put it down really nice. And in fact, you can see the film actually went over the tape, but the, I kept the decal off the tape and it looks really good. There you go. And another item that's not included in the stock decals is the Waddell Williams Air Service logo that goes on the vertical stab. So same thing from pictures, you see it's pretty much aligned with the NR61Y. So using some blue painter's tape to establish that straight line. And now that I see this, I think when I do the other side, I'm gonna put the words on first and then put the logo in between them. But, uh, You'll see how I go about doing this. And also, I also learned a lesson here. When you're doing that little trick with removing part of the backing, don't bend the backing like I did because then it goes on a little wonky. Bend the top layer because you don't care about that. And that way it will sit nice and flush. So not the end of the world, but something that as I'm rewatching this, it's a good tip that I'll heed to in the future. And these videos help me just as much as I hope they help all of you guys too. And there are the, from Cali, the, the words come as a different decal, so. Again, because that top corner is affixed, then you have the location where you want it. And again, apply some pressure and peel back the top. I was really happy how this came out. Uh, I think it really adds a lot to the plane. We'll go ahead and add the words next. And for this video, I purposely only applied the decals to the right-hand side of the plane because at the end of this video, I'm gonna show you both sides uh, before decal and after decal so you get a feel for what gets added. And again, with smaller letters, with the period, you have to take extra caution to peel this back so part of uh, like the R or the period doesn't come up, but just take your time. So here is the Calligraphics Wheel Pant Gilmore Redline logo. This one is a little hard because the wheel pant is curved. So do your best. And this is a perfect opportunity to tell you, and I've done it myself many times. Sometimes you're putting these on and it seems to be going wonky. And there's a point where you think, okay, I'm just gonna shove it on and, and deal with it. But when you think that, stop and take a breath and just take your time because you're gonna see me struggle with this a little bit because of the curvature of the pants. But take your time. You might spend an extra two minutes to get it nice and even because when I peel back the top layer, you'll see the M-O-R-E doesn't stick. And so you have to just kind of play around. Okay, let's let's take it off from the other direction. Let's go slower, et cetera, et cetera. So take your time and the results will pay off. And I really like how you have the thick black outline on the words and the line here. It really pops with the rest of the pinstriping on the plane. So there you go. Uh, even with curvature, you just have to take your time and then get out all of the seams and the little, maybe a little air bubble, but it went on really nice. And there you go. So now let's head out to the backyard and see it with the motor running. Here is the left side with no extra decals. Still looks wonderful. It can fly like this. No one would care if, if it looked like this. Uh, and in fact, who knows? Maybe I'll keep them off the left side. Who knows? Because this looks great. 
But coming up is the right hand side with all the decals in view. There's the Oil Company Limited, the Cockpit Lion. You can see the wheel pants down there and we'll pan over to see the Waddell Williams logo. This plane is ready to fly except for CG. And so I'm gonna have a video where I unbox and review the Zykoi Balance Master Pro or the Weight and Balance Master Pro. And we're gonna use that to balance this guy out flying with four 6S 5000s. So watch for that video, I'll have it linked here. But thanks for tuning in to all six episodes where we built this beautiful art from Black Horse Models. And I will be back when we get this thing in the air. So Gilmore thanks you, I thank you. Check out my channel for other build series in the past and in the future. And we'll talk to you next time.